All right, so we are starting our new unit. Our big idea for this unit is understanding improper fractions, mixed numbers, ratios, and percents helps us to describe and compare quantities. Our concept today is about relating mixed numbers and improper fractions. This is from lessons one and two, uh, the connect sections in unit five, and some other books as well. All right, so let's start by looking at our picture. Fractions are used to describe the, uh, the amount of something and the way something is divided. This set of sandwiches, how would you describe this number of sandwiches to your partner? Turn and talk to your elbow partner. How would you describe these sandwiches? Press pause and do that now. All right, you might each have shown your um, sandwiches in different ways. So first, let's talk about mixed numbers. Mixed numbers use a large whole number. So saying, for example, that there are two complete full sandwiches and that there is three-fourths of a sandwich left over here or on the side here. So two and three fourths, that is a mixed number. It has a large whole number and a fraction. Some of you might have talked about the number of actual pieces of bread. So then you might have said that there are one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven fourths of a sandwich. That bottom number between a mixed number and an improper fraction is always the same. Remember that bottom number is how much one section or one item is divided into. So it's divided into one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four pieces. Here it would also be divided into one, two, three, four that missing piece, four pieces. So in a mixed number and an improper fraction, that bottom number is always the same. It is always how much one is divided into. So those are the two different ways of communicating this picture. The improper fraction, so 11 pieces, 11 out of four, or the mixed number, two full sandwiches and three fourths of a sandwich. All right, so let's do some practice with mixed and improper fractions. So again, looking at this example, we can see that they are divided into one, two, three. So three is our bottom number in both fractions. We could describe this as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of three, when we're talking about how many are green. Um, or we could say there are two complete uh, trapezoids, I guess those would be, and two-thirds of a trapezoid. They both are the same amount. All it is is communicating that differently. They're divided the same, they're the same amount, they're just communicated differently, which means they are equivalent. Remember, equivalent means that they are the same. Okay, so they are the same. They're just two different ways of saying that amount. Uh, when we talk about an improper fraction, the numerator, the top number, is always greater than the denominator, which is the bottom number. That makes this an improper fraction. When we have a whole number, which is the large two, and a fraction, the two thirds, that becomes a mixed number because it is a whole number and a fraction mixed together. Uh, let's take a look here. All right, I'd like you to take a look at each picture. Write the mixed number for each picture. Press pause and do that on your paper now. All right, let's check if you are on the right track. Let's start with A. As a mixed number, it would have one, two, three, four holes. So four is a nice large number and make sure it's large enough that it doesn't look like it's part of the number next to it. And we have one, two, three, four, five. Out of how many altogether? Well, let's see how many are in one. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So out of nine. So four and five ninths. And as I said, that whole number should be large enough. It should not look like 45 ninths. It should not look like 45 ninths. See how those two are really hard to tell the difference? Remember to seek to understand and make your fraction as clear as possible with that large number, really large, and make it between the top and the bottom number. When it's right beside, it looks like this is 45 ninths, which is very similar to this one, which is 45 ninths. So make sure that you're drawing them properly. Okay. Let's look at B. B, we have one, two, three holes and three left over, oops, sorry, three left over out of how many? Well, let's check how many are in one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, or I could just say three by four, it's an array, um, is twelve. So three and three twelfths would be the mixed number for that one. Now let's try C. And in C, I would say that we're looking for the number of complete trays uh, filled with marbles. So one, two, two would be my large number. I have two little ones here, so two again would be my top number there, my numerator, and my denominator would be one, two, three, four. Oops, sorry, let's count here. I'm just gonna change that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So my numerator would have to be, or my denominator, sorry, would have to be 10. Two and two tenths is how we would say that. Now check yours. Now I would like you to take each of these same fractions and communicate them as an improper fraction. Press pause and do that on your paper now. All right, let's check how you did with your improper fractions. So let's look at A. And again, we know that there was, let's count again, sorry, I forget. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total. So our bottom number is nine, our denominator. And our numerator is how many all together? So one group of nine, nine, a second group of nine, third group of nine, a fourth group of nine, so four times nine is 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So it would be 41, oops, 41 out of nine would be the improper fraction for that one. B, let's take a look at B. And as we said with B, it was one, two, three by one, two, three, four. It's an array, three times four is 12. So there's 12 in each one. One, two, three groups of 12. Well, three groups of 12, three times 12 is 36. Uh, add these three, 36, 37, 38, 39. That means it is 39 out of, and what did we say was in one? We said 12, so 39 twelfths would be how you would communicate that improper fraction. C, let's take a look at C. And if I remember correctly, there was 10. Let's just count to be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, or two, by one, two, three, four, five, it's also an array. Two by five is 10. So 10, 21, 22. So 22 out of, and it was one group of 10. So our denominator is 10. So 22 tenths is how we would say this improper fraction. Can you check yours? Now, when we want to compare fractions, we also often have to be able to switch them into the other type of fraction to make them easier to compare. Remember, whenever we compare something, we always want to make them as much the same as possible. So let's look at how we can convert a improper, sorry, a mixed number and an improper fraction. If I wanted to change a mixed number into an, Im sorry, an improper fraction into a mixed number, sorry, converting to a mixed number, from an improper fraction, we use division to do this. Okay, let's take a look here. Let me just enlarge here for a second. Okay, when we do this, we have our improper fraction of five over three. That's a little bit small. I'm gonna make it bigger over here for you. If we have five over three, that means we are dividing each into groups of three. So we're going to have to divide 
5 by 3. So let's go ahead and do that. How many groups of 3 would we have out of 5? Well, we would have 1. 1 times 3 is 3. I'm left with the remainder of 2. So that means I would have one complete one, two left over, out of, and again, what's my bottom number? Three, it's out of three there. So it would become one and two third. And you can see I've taken that top number, has become my big number. The remainder, which you can sort of see on there, it's kind of on the side there, becomes my top number. And the number I divide by, remember, is my groups of, and that's how much each denominator is. It's the number in one group. So that's not too tricky. Now I can very easily compare one third, sorry, one and three fourths with five thirds because I've made them both into mixed numbers. One and three fourths would look like this. One and two thirds would look like this. And notice again, those pieces are the same, those strips, I guess, the, the strip of, of the shape is the same size. They've just been divided differently. And we can see that this is just slightly more. Now, if I were to draw it, I would have drawn them right underneath each other because that to me makes them much easier to compare. And then I would have split them into thirds. Okay. Shaded them in. And then when you compare, you can see that this is just slightly larger. And that's going back to grade five and comparing fractions. All right, now again, uh, sometimes we're going to want to go the other direction and take our mixed number and make it into an improper fraction. So say I wanted to write two and three fourths as an improper fraction. Um, Allison uses money to help her with that. You could also just look at two complete groups of four, two complete groups of four. I would just take my four times two here. What is four times two? Well, it's eight plus the three that's on top, so plus three equals 11. So it would be 11 out of, and again it was groups of four, so 11 fourths. So again, what you do with your mixed number, two and three fourths, is you multiply those numbers, and then you add what's left. And your bottom number, your denominator, stays the same. Drawing a picture also helps quite a bit. So you could see here he's drawn a picture. He's taken two complete circles and three fourths of a circle, sorry, a square, gosh, a square. And then he divides those two holes into fourths because it's divided into fourths or quarters. And then you just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So drawing a picture works for it really well, and the math way works really well. Two ways that you can convert your mixed number into an improper fraction. <coughs> and really, with our improper fraction to a mixed number, drawing a picture would work just as well. If you were to draw this picture and then count back, okay, well, how many whole numbers do I have? Well, I have two and three fourths. You could go backwards that way as well. All right, so very quickly, if we are changing a improper fraction into a mixed number, we can divide using the math way. 13 divided by 6, our top number becomes our large number, and our remainder becomes our numerator, and what we divide by becomes our denominator. That makes our mixed number. Again, we could draw out a picture, no problem. So we would have uh, groups of six. So I'd start with my group of six. And I color them in. That's only six, so I'm wanting 13, so I need another group of six. So I draw another group of six, trying to make my pieces as equal as possible. One, two, three, four, five, six, six and six is 12. I'm still not at 13. I need one more group of six. I had 12, so I only need one more, so 13. So then I can see that it is two complete holes and one sixth. So drawing the picture works really quite well as well. 
if I wanted to go from a mixed number to an improper fraction the math way, remember I can multiply 3 times 4, 4 times 3, which is 12, add the 2, add the 2, which makes it 14. Uh, so then I know that it's going to, going to be 14 thirds. Of course, I could also draw my picture. So again, let's start with thirds. Oops, that didn't work properly, just a second here. I forgot thirds, I was going to draw sixth again. Okay, so thirds. I had four complete groups of thirds. Let's divide them into thirds so they actually are thirds, trying to make those shapes as equal as possible. Grid paper is a really good strategy. Then your blocks are the same size, but I can't do that on here. So I have four groups. I'm not quite done because I need one more group of two thirds. And now I just color them in. I'm going to use a different color here just so that we don't mix up our shapes. Four complete groups colored in with two. And now I would just have to go back and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Or I could say four groups of three, twelve, uh, plus two more, thirteen, fourteen, give me fourteen thirds. So again, uh, either way works. You can draw the pictures or you can use the math way to figure that out. Or if you want to be exemplary, you could use both strategies. You need to, all right, now you get to do some practice with your partners. Uh, write the mixed number and the improper fraction for each picture. So try that for each picture. Press pause and do that now. All right, let's take a look. I'm going to start with a mixed number. I have one complete whole one, and it's divided into sixths. So I know my denominator is six. How many do I have left over? I have one. So my mixed number would be one and one sixth. If I wanted to do my improper fraction, I would count how many. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six in here, plus one more is seven, so seven sixths would be my improper fraction for that one. Go ahead and do B and C mixed and improper if you haven't already. All right, let's check B. Well, I have two complete whole numbers. I'm going to start with my mixed number and two left over out of how many in one whole section? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Really? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, out of sevenths. So two complete wholes and two sevenths left over. If it's groups of seven, one group of seven, a second group of seven, 14, 15, 16. So 16 sevenths would be my improper fraction. Now try C if you haven't already. Okay, now C is a little bit tricky. I don't love how they've drawn their picture, but often you'll come across this. You can see that C would have to have been in fourths. So I'm going to go through and make it into fourths. Ooh, not very well drawn there, sorry. Pretend those are equal size pieces. I'll start with my mixed number again. I have one, two, three full ones and one, two, two out of, and one whole would be out of fourths. And that's why I split them into fourths there so I could visually see how many all together. Well, one, two, three groups of four is 12, 13, 14. So 14 and they're out of four pieces as you can see. So fourths is my bottom number, 14 fourths. All right, check with your partners to see if, or check your work to see if you've done it correctly. All right, let's do some practice with converting. You're going to take each mixed number and make it into an improper fraction. Go ahead and do that on your paper now for all three, please. Press pause and do that now. All right, let's check. I'm going to start with the math way. I'm going to go 8 times 3, because that's 8 groups of 3, which is 24. Oops, times 3. Ah, I'm going to erase that. That doesn't look very good. Times 3, sorry. iPad pens just don't work as well. Which is 24. Plus that 2 makes it 26. So it would be 26 thirds, because that bottom number stays the same. All right, let's try again for seven or six and seven eighths. Um, 
eighths is kind of large. I don't really feel like drawing that. I'm going to use the math way again. Um, six times eight equals 48 plus seven. Well, seven plus eight is 15. Plus the four, actually plus the 40. 15 plus uh, 40 is 55, so that would be 55 eighths. Nine and one half, I think I'm going to choose to use the picture for that one. Uh, let me just make myself some place to draw. I'll move that after. Um, so I've got groups of two. Oops. Try to make those equal sizes. Again, I wish I had grid paper on here. Groups of two. Gosh, I need quite a few groups of two here if I need nine of them. That's okay. We can keep going. That's eight, nine. Oh, and I need one more for that other half. So let's color those in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and only one. What would that be as an improper fraction? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Nine times two is eighteen, so that makes sense. Plus one more is nineteen, so it would be nineteen halves. Go ahead and check yours if you haven't already. All right, now change these improper fractions into mixed numbers. Press pause and do that now on your paper with your partners. All right, let's check. If I wanted to do this the math way, I would be um, dividing. I'm going to try this first one with the picture just because it's out of thirds, so that's going to be a nice easy one to draw. So draw my group of thirds. One, two, three. Well, that's not enough. I need another group of thirds. I have five, so two more. Okay, now I know that there's one whole group and two thirds. Again, that bottom denominator stays the same. Seven sixths. I think I'm going to do use, the div use the division way. I need seven uh, divided by groups of six. Well, one would fit in there. That's six. And I've got one left over. That means I have one and one six. Remember, this becomes my large number. My remainder becomes my numerator. Five ninths, oops, sorry, not nine fifths would be how I would say that, my mistake. Um, I'm going to use division again. Nine divided into groups of five. Uh, one group of five leaves me with five, subtract is four. So that means one and four. Fifths. Remember, my denominator stays the same. One and four fifths. Check yours if you haven't already. All right, you're ready to move into your concept practice. Notice it is two pages today. Um, one is about just mixed and improper numbers, and one is about converting them. So page 164, numbers 1, 2, and 8, representing numbers as mixed numbers and improper fractions. And page 168, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, and 8, which are converting them into mixed numbers or converting improper or mixed numbers into improper fractions. Uh, go ahead and do that now. Once we have marked the concept practice, here is the exit slip in case you've lost it for mixed and improper fractions. You can use that to complete it. All right, continuing with mixed and improper fractions, here's some problem solving open type questions that you can do to do some extra practice. Um, feel free to try those. And lastly, here's some writing practice if you want some practice with explaining um, how you can choose either one. Uh, reflect prompts 
can 5-6 be written as a mixed number? Use words and pictures to explain. So can that be written as a mixed number? Or what is the difference between a mixed number and improper fraction? Uh, use pictures, words, and numbers to show how to rename an improper fraction as a mixed number, showing how to convert. So again, you can do those. Um, and that's it for mixed and improper fractions um, at this point. Thank you.